I'm going to give you a quick introduction to how you can start looking at bone x-rays. It's going to be too much in a short video to go over every part of the body that you might get a skeletal x-ray, but there are certain principles that you can use to look at any x-ray in the body. To illustrate, I'm going to bring up two x-rays of the ankle. One of them is normal and the other one is not. The things that you're going to look for is first alignment. So are the bones aligned with each other in an anatomical orientation. Then the next you're going to look at is the joint space and you're going to follow whatever joint space there is and make sure that the joint space looks smooth and symmetric. Then when you look for fractures it's important to follow the cortex or the edges of the bone and make sure that it's smooth. It should always be smooth. Whenever the edge of the bone is not smooth whether it's in the joint space or it's along the cortex, that's bad. And I want you to think of skeletal radiology as either you're looking for things that are good, smooth, or bad, not smooth. So let's take a look at the alignment of this ankle. This right ankle, the talus is aligned with the tibia, and the fibula is aligned nicely with the tibia. Whereas if you look at the ankle over here, the tibia is at a completely different alignment than the talus, while the fibula remains aligned with the tibia. And so, so clearly this shows that the alignment is off. Now take a look at the joint space. Here's the normal joint space and it's symmetric all the way across. Now if you look at this abnormal ankle, one side is much wider than the other. This is a very abnormal appearance of the joint space. Now another feature that you should look at is the soft tissues. Don't forget that the soft tissues play an important role in the musculoskeletal x-ray just as examining the soft tissues would be an important part of your exam. And if you look at the soft tissues of the right ankle, pretty uh, thin soft tissues, and for this person this would be a very normal appearance. Now take a look at the opposite side. Notice how at the ankle it bulges and there's increased density of the soft tissues. That's indicative of soft tissue injury, which goes along with fractures and joint dislocations. Now we'll put these away and we'll take a look at some fractures. Now here's a fracture that hopefully you won't miss. If you look to see if the border's smooth, clearly they're smooth here, smooth, 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 not smooth, right? And there's a fracture. Smooth, 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 not smooth. And there's a fracture. And this is clearly fractured, and the alignment is off. So you wouldn't miss this. Big fractures are very easy to pick up if you're looking for them. Here's another example of a pretty significant fracture, and you shouldn't miss this. So if you look at the normal side, and again, you're going to look for smooth borders. Smooth, smooth, look at the pelvis, smooth relatively smooth, now smooth, not smooth, right? Something's going on here. That's smooth, but this is jagged, not smooth. You have jagged lines, and this is indicative of an intertrochanteric fracture of the femur. Intertrochanteric because it's between the greater and lesser trochanters. Now when you go ahead and look at the joint space, you'll notice it's pretty smooth. So the joint remains located, meaning that it's in the correct location, as opposed to dislocated or outside the correct location. So let's grab another set of examples, and we're going to look at these three images of the elbow. Now, in these two images on the bottom, you see the cortex and say, okay, not smooth, right? You're following smooth, 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 not smooth and you've clearly identified a fracture, and then when you go to look at the alignment, you see that the, this ulna is not aligned. And if you know the normal anatomy of the elbow, you'd realize that this radial head is not where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be here. So that is dislocated. So here you have a fractured dislocation, and you can see that on this AP view where you have the ulna, and then the radial head is completely dislocated. Sometimes, however, it's not so easy. So if you take a look at this elbow up top, everything looks pretty good. And for a radiologist, making the diagnosis of a radial head fracture 
can be pretty tough. But as a clinician, you actually have an advantage that we do not. You have the patient in front of you. So we might notice that while this looks pretty smooth, there's a slight little bend here which makes us a little nervous. There's a slight little lucency here which we may or may not know what to make of. But there is also a joint effusion. And when we see that, we're going to be very suspicious in an adult of a radial head fracture. Now, we might question it, we might call it, but ultimately you get to push on the radial head. And if the person has pain, then you know that it's fractured. Tests and radiographs are very important, but you shouldn't dismiss your clinical exam. For certain body parts, there are certain techniques that can be useful to evaluate them, and in particular, the hands and the feet. So you're still going to look for smooth and not smooth, right? So this is smooth, 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 not smooth. Okay, so clearly there's fractures here, and you can see the metacarpals are all displaced posteriorly. There is malalignment with respect to the metacarpals, and the wrist joint. When you follow the smoothness of the cortex, you'll see smooth, 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 not smooth, right? Not smooth. So clearly you've identified some fractures. And there's different approaches to take to look at smoothness when you're looking at hands and feet. And one way would be to look at the entire digit and just go digit by digit by digit. Another approach, however, is to go across at the different levels. So what you do is you're gonna look at metacarpal, metacarpal, metacarpals, and identify this not smoothness, right? These fractures down here. And then you do the phalanges at the different levels. And as you go back and forth, you're comparing across the thumb to the second, to the third, to the fourth, and to the fifth digits. And notice the severity of the soft tissue swelling. Sometimes it's hard when you're looking at radiographs to really appreciate the extent of the swelling. And a, a good thing to try is palpate this area on your hand. And you'll see that for most people, you push right down onto the bone. And you can imagine with this degree of thickness, it's going to feel kind of squishy there. So that is clearly swollen. We're going to use that same technique that we just talked about. And we're going to look, okay, smooth, smooth. And then you go, hmm, right here. Maybe not smooth. Take a closer look at that. Mm, then, oh, not smooth. Okay, definitely not smooth. Not smooth. And those are fractures. Smooth, smooth. Oh, you get that line there. Not smooth. That's a break in the cortex. Not only is this not smooth, but it's not aligned normally. And then, of course, not smooth and indicative of fractures, not smooth. So another strategy is to kind of know where fractures often occur and where your blind spots are. And the metatarsal heads are one place where it's very common to have fractures and very common to miss them. So when you're going along the metatarsals, you want to make sure that you pay attention to the necks. And you also want to make sure you pay attention to the bases. Because while the bases aren't fractured here, that's another very common spot to have fractures. It's a very easy place to miss them. By the way, don't forget the corners of your film. If you look down here, smooth, not smooth and you've just identified a fibula fracture. Take a close look at this fracture line here because this is the kind of fracture that is more difficult to pick up. What you're looking for in these fractures is a lucency that extends through the cortex. Depending on the view, you may or may not see the actual uh, break in the cortex or, or a discontinuity in the cortex like you do here in this one. What you're looking for is that lucency. Now, if you look in other views, you might actually see a more clear discontinuity. We're going to look at this foot and we're going to apply some of the same principles that we just talked about. Here we're looking at smooth, right? Smooth, smooth, not smooth, right? That's clearly and not where the metatarsals are supposed to line up on the lateral. If you look on the AP view, you see while this is smooth and smooth, and there's a big gap between the first 
metatarsal and the second metatarsal. That gap is a Liz Frank injury. This appearance on the lateral is indicative of a Liz Frank injury. And while this is a rather obvious Liz Frank injury, the gap here can be pretty subtle. And it's something that you don't want to miss. If you have suspicion, you can do standing views to make sure that you can see this finding. Smooth, okay, smooth, 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 not smooth. And you can see this little jagged edge right here and this lucency that extends through the cortex, extends into the bone. There's also an abnormality in this other ankle and we're gonna compare the appearance of these fracture lines on the two x-rays. And you'll see that while here you have this bit of a jagged edge and you have this lucency on this side, you also have a lucency, but you have this sclerotic or bright appearance along the path of the fracture line. And this indicates that it's a healing fracture. And this is one way that you can try to determine if fractures are acute or if they're chronic or old. And that's to look at the sclerotic appearance around the fracture line. Uh, now you still might be able to see the fracture line as you do in this case. Also note that you have a kind of a buildup of periosteal reaction and the edges are not sharp. Acute fractures will tend to have very sharp appearing edges, but when the edges become blunted and more smooth, then they're healing and that's indicative of healing or old injuries. Here's another tricky finding that you'll see in both adults and pediatrics. Now this is a pediatric patient and you can tell because you have the growth plates which have not yet fused and those are normal. And sometimes you'll see lucencies that extend not only through the medullary space or the inside of the bone, but they also extend at an acute angle through the cortex. And it'll look like a lucency which you can see here, this line that kind of comes down like this. See this lucency through the bone, and those are vascular channels. And you can see them in almost any bone. There are some classic places, like the tibia, and you shouldn't mistake them for fractures. Remember, if you're clinically suspicious and you're not sure if it's a fracture or not on the x-ray, you can do other views, you can do comparisons to the opposite side, or you can directly palpate. And if the patient has pain in a suspicious area, then it's probably a fracture. But beware because vascular channels can look like fractures. They typically won't be malaligned. You may have a lucency that goes through the cortex. Follow along and you're looking at smooth, Looks good, smooth, and you're following all the bones, smooth, and you're following the cortex. But then when you get to the calcaneus, you'll notice in certain places it's not smooth. Right? It's a little bit jagged over here. And then it's got a sclerotic appearance over here. And this was a calcaneus fracture. The last thing I'm going to show you, let's just take a good close look at the joint space. And you have to follow the smoothness of the cortex, not only along the long bones, but also along the joint space. Here, if you look at this side, you see it's very smooth. The joint space is very homogeneous. But if you look on this side, while well, this looks very smooth, you follow along this line, and now you have this irregular defect here. And this is an osteochondral defect. And it's a kind of fracture, uh, and it's important to recognize. Now, while I like to talk about the importance of smoothness, not all smoothness is an acute fracture. But it is something to pay attention to. So here you have some irregularity of the cortex, but there's no defect. And this types of periosteal reaction may occur for a variety of reasons, and you might see them. And over time, when you look at a lot of x-rays, you'll start to recognize which ones look concerning and which ones do not. But that is the topic for another time. So you're going to look at the alignment. You're going to look at the joint space. You're going to look at the soft tissues. And you're going to look for the smoothness. And you're going to look for those lucencies 
that will help you identify fractures.